Hello YouTubers and Canon users alike. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Canon EOS Rebel T5, just explain some of the basics on that, and give you all some basic photography tips. The Canon EOS Rebel T5, also known as the Canon 1200D. This was one of the most popular digital SLRs sold for Christmas of 2014, with the kit lens and the 75 to 300 millimeter lens. The first thing that you're going to want to do when you unbox your camera and remove all the packaging is securely attach the neck strap to the two eyelets on either side of the camera. This will ensure that you do not drop and damage your brand new camera. Once you've attached the strap to your DSLR, you are ready to take a look at what's behind the camera. When you look at the back of your Canon T5, you see most of the regular buttons that you see on all of the SLR cameras, but in a more simpler design built for first time users. On the top of your Canon T5, you see your on and off switch, your flash release button, shutter release button, your shutter speed dial in manual mode, and your, um, your motoring. So you have your manual mode, shutter priority, aperture priority, auto mode, uh, auto mode with no flash, your portrait mode, landscape, macro, sports, night photography, and videography. For many first time users, the first thing you're going to want to do is just go ahead and crank it to auto mode, which is the green button that has the A and the plus sign. In auto mode, your camera will automatically adjust to its setting, therefore it will turn the aperture up or down related to the sunlight, a fast shutter speed or slow shutter speed, and different ISOs. So now that you've looked at your camera and you're ready to put a lens on. So first thing you're going to do is unscrew your body cap, just set that to the side. Inside you have your mirror and your reflex that also has your image sensor inside but that's covered up right now. So yeah. So you're going to grab your kit lens, unscrew the body cap on that, and this one is an EFS lens, so it has a little white dot there. You're going to line that up with the white dot on the body of your camera, place it in there, and screw it until you hear it click. Yes, if you don't hear it click, then it's not securely placed, and it could fall off at any moment. On your kit lens, you should see two switches, one that says image stabilizer and one that says AF and MF. Your image stabilizer makes for a clearer, cleaner picture, so you should probably always leave that on, on. <laughs> but, you know, it's up to you. Just play around with it and see what you like. The AF and MF mode, or switch, is for autofocus and manual focus. For quick focusing shots on the go, just speeding to get the picture, just switch it to autofocus, but if you want to customize your focus, or your camera just doesn't like to work, switch it to manual focus by just sliding the switch to the right, and you will be able to manually focus by turning the front ring. To focus your camera in autofocus mode, switch it to AF, in the same place, and press down your shutter halfway until your camera beeps or the focus ring stops moving. So you can move around. You just hear the beep there. And then you're ready to take a picture. On any non-prime lens, you will see numbers that go across the top ring of your lens. Those are your millimeter open numbers. So this is the smallest millimeter that I have and it is 18 to 55. This determines the zoom at which your camera takes pictures. So 18 is very, very wide angle. This will take good landscape shots, things that you need to take pictures up close. I'll just do a little demonstration of that right here. So, and that's 18 millimeters, and when I switch to 55, or like when I turn this, it'll zoom in and out. So. The bigger the number, the closer the zoom. So, zooming in, that's 55 millimeters. Zooming out, that's 18 millimeters. Changing your lens, 
you'll see a little press button on the side of your camera beside the lens. Push that down, take your lens off, make sure you put on the caps because if dirt gets in here, it can scratch up your camera and it'll be ruined forever. So you put both your cam, put both your lens covers on and you grab a different lens. This lens right here is the EF 75 to 300 millimeter lens. So yeah, it is an EF lens, which means it has a little red dot. So when you take off your end cap, find the red dot on your camera, stick it in there and line it up until it clicks. Right off the bat, you're going to notice that this is a much, much bigger lens. That is because it takes pictures from 75 millimeters to 300 millimeters, like I explained earlier. This means that it zooms in way farther than the kit lens. So, yeah. It also has your standard autofocus and manual focus. And to zoom in, once again, turn your, turn your lens as high up as it'll go. Or you can go in the middle, just depending on what subject and how far away it is that you're trying to capture. You also have your standard focus ring that is on the front. It's usually always on the front. So turn that to focus in and out on manual focus mode. So I've shown you the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens, which is considered a wide angle lens for landscapes and somewhat portraits and the 75 to 300 millimeter lens which is considered a telephoto lens. This is good for you know, long range shots, zooms, and stuff like that. What I haven't shown you is my new Canon 50 millimeter prime lens. It is a 1.8 aperture lens that allows for much more light to travel through and to the viewfinder and to the image sensor. You can tell right now that it's way bigger lets a lot more light in and what's so special about this lens is that it can take pictures in very low light situations because it is so round and wide it lets in a whole lot more light which gives you better composed pictures at, in the dark the unfortunate thing about it is that it does not zoom it is a fixed lens that means if you want to get closer or farther away from the subject you have to physically move closer or farther away. So now that you know the basics about your camera, you know everything about lenses, between apertures, telephoto lenses, wide angle lenses, zoom lenses, and prime lenses, you're ready to go take some pictures. So switch to auto mode or whatever mode you want to and go take some shots. So if you get tired of shooting in auto mode, you can always switch to my favorite, manual mode. This is for the amateurs to professionals. Most people don't know how to use this, and that's what I'm going to explain next. Okay, so looking at the display in the back of your camera while in manual mode, it does look very complicated for the first time user, but I promise that if you listen, you'll get to learn it pretty quickly. Okay, so right here on the top left, you have your shutter speed. That can be adjusted from the top dial that's up here in the front. Right there okay so right next to it on the right you have your aperture which is how much light you want to be let in it's how big the hole on your lens is letting light in through the front next to it you have your ISO which also deals with light and how much of it is exposed during your capture this is your white balance just adjust that to Just adjust that to whatever you want. Here's how you want your picture to be composed, distortion-wise and stuff like that. I just leave mine on landscape because that's the kind of photography that I do a lot. And some other settings that you can just do whatever you want with. Right here on the bottom is your manual focus, auto focus again. You can adjust that from the lens, like I said earlier. Here's your continuous shooting, which, yeah. To adjust these, you'll press the Q button right here and move around with your scroll buttons here. So in this mode you'll see your single shooting, continuous shooting, 10 second timer, 2 second timer, and continuous timer. So I use mine on continuous shooting because I can take pictures at 3 pictures a second and that's very nice. Here's your like metering mode. 
this is on this one you'll have focus on the outsides on this mode you'll have focus on the inside and outsides and on this side it will focus wherever you tell it to okay so I leave mine on there this is your image quality so when you click on this using the set button and here is the large image in the finest format there's large what it means by large is it takes the best crisp picture sorry hold on just a second what it means by large is it takes the best crisp, crisp picture and there's a little bit less with the large that looks like stair steps and then medium crisp and large and medium that's a little bit less I don't know why it keeps cutting off bear with me here and then there's small and then there's user defined right here but um, this is raw plus JPEG and in raw plus JPEG it takes the un unfiltered un you know, untouched picture directly from the camera, which means it just immediately captures the physical picture. The, the camera doesn't do anything to edit it whatsoever. Except the only thing about this is it can make your camera take a whole lot less pictures because they take up so much more memory that it restricts your SD card usage about half. So what I like to do is I keep mine I keep mine on large and the highest setting. So, about the shutter speed and aperture. Shutter speed is how fast your shutter is open. So, if it's a very sunny day where there's lots of light, you're going to want a higher shutter speed, maybe even up to 1 4,000th of a second. But if it's on a very slow, rainy, foggy day, or at nighttime for astrophotography, you'll want a lower shutter speed like this is two seconds one second and you know it even goes to 30 seconds and a mob and a mob <laughs> a mode called bulb which allows you to take pictures as long as you hold the shutter down so right next to it I'm sorry right next to it we have aperture and the way that what aperture does is it lets it is the hole in the front of the camera that lets in light so if it's a very sunny day you're gonna want a higher aperture now the higher your aperture is the less light it's gonna let in and the lower it is the more light it's gonna let in so right now it's really dark out so I'm gonna use 1.8 so that lets in as much light as physically possible that's pretty much the basics you need to know for manual mode. One more thing that I will explain is that with the um, little magnifying glass with the plus sign in it, I don't know what that's called exactly, you press that down, hold it down with your thumb, and with the scroll, main scroller on the top, you can determine where you want your camera to focus in manual mode. So if you look through the viewfinder, you will see this right here on your viewfinder, printed very lightly, but you'll be able to see them. And you can scroll this to figure out where you want your camera to focus. And if it's in the middle, then guess where your camera's going to focus? In the middle. Okay, so if you keep it on this mode where everything is lit up, then your camera will determine whether or not or what to focus on. Also, invest in a good tripod with a good tripod mount. I think the tripod that I'm using right now has over 15 adjustable points, and it's very, very sturdy. So invest in that and a good post-processing software such as Photoshop or Adobe After Effects or I like to use if I'm using my iPhone to take pictures I use the app AVR what I mean by post-processing is taking your picture after you take it and putting filters on it making it look a lot better doing some adjusting to the light white balance aperture stuff and stuff like that. It just makes your picture go from good to greater. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to talk to me by leaving a comment in the box. I will try to answer it as fast as possible. And if you'd like to see some of my photography, follow me on Instagram at life underscore in underscore 2015 or go look at my blog. It is some dude photography dot blogspot dot com. Thanks for watching.